spring is in the air and kids are starting to get that spring fever going. Uh, one of our student teachers was talking today about how our kids just are not understanding, aren't getting uh, factoring and don't get the connection and don't know, she doesn't know what, what else to do with uh, her kids and trying to get them to, to learn this. This is an Algebra 2 class and they've already done it in Algebra 1 so it started me thinking about how could we teach graphing and connect it with some of the uh, concepts of, of factoring. So I came up with an idea oh, and I'll present this to her tomorrow but let's say we take an equation like negative x squared something that's factorable and I'll go with plus 5x and plus 6. And we all remember from one of my earlier videos, I can graph that. Adjust the view window. Currently the view window is a little zoomed in, so go to the initial view window and redraw it. Show you how I could zoom out. I just press minus. I wanted to know where the roots are, so I'll just go with a G solve and a roots. I like that root, so I'll lock that in, move over, like that root, lock it in, so there's my roots. Negative one and six. So I started thinking, well that that's a pretty pretty neat thing to do, but uh, I want to be able to connect this with some factoring. So let me get out of here. So let's try the factored form of, of an equation. We know the factored form should be in the form AX plus B times a second quantity, and well, that should be a b, not a log. Delete that out of there. Alpha b. And the second equation should be in the form of cx plus d. This gives me four different variables to work with. Execute that. I want to be able to modify it, so I'm going to use the modify key. There's my first, there's my second. Now, I know what the roots are from earlier. That's a negative one, and that's a six. So I should, if I'm a student, I should know that that's got something to do with my B and my D. So I'm going to change my A to one. So now it's looking like it's the same kind of a, it's in the same orientation. Uh, my B value, let's go with negative 1. And my D value, I'll go with a 6. Okay, now that was pretty close, except for the fact that this should probably be a 1, because I wanted to make sure that these two line up. So now there's my factored form. If I had changed one of these, because currently my C is negative, what if I made my A negative? Students won't always see that connection right away. I can come up with another factored form that has those exact same two roots. But if I just change a couple of values, I've got the wrong curve. So it gets me thinking about different roots. Let's say I've got some rational roots, some roots that are nice and fractional. So I'll get out of here. Let's see, how do I connect those two concepts? So this is how I connect those two. I'm going to go with an equation like um, 6x squared plus Oh, let's go with a middle term of if a is 2 and c is 3 and 1 and 1. So let's go with another 5x and 1 at the end. Whoops. Get over there, make that a plus 1. Execute that. Let's draw those up. I may have gone a little too far on that one. Let me see. See what my roots are. Well, 
those will work. So work quite nicely actually. So let me zoom in some more. Exit out of that part. So I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this. I'm going to make it a modifiable. So what I want them to look at is, I know the roots here are one half and one third. So one half and one third. So how is that going to look when I've got a lead coefficient of A, a B, a C, and a D? So one of these roots has to be my one half root. So if that's going to be my one half root, I can make A1, B2. Second one's got to be my one third root. So I hope students will make the mistake of going, well, that's got to be a one and a three. They're going to le learn pretty quickly. Those aren't quite right. So they have to think about, okay, well, how is this equation being solved so I get an answer of one half? It turns out they've got to reverse the idea and say, okay, that's a two here and a one and a 1 for my B and a 3 for a lead coefficient of C for the second one and on the D that's got to be a 1. So again I'm connecting the idea of the original equation with the idea of how can I get my roots to match up to this factored form. It gives you a nice place to, to connect the drawing, the actual curve itself, with the factored form. And how can I play with these to get that answer that I'm looking for? It and I just I give them the original curve to begin with. So let's I just go ahead and draw it out, and then I say, okay, well let's take a look at those roots of that original function. It's the blue one a half and one third. And it connects to the idea of the rational root theorem which is probably what I believe is probably a better way of teaching that concept of factoring anyway. That's a different, that's a video for a different day and an argument for a different time. That's a big discussion we're having within our department. But uh, that's just one way I can use the color features, the modify feature, the ability to, to do different things with the uh, prism here to teach and reinforce ideas of factoring and how can I use the idea of roots with the ideas that I have with uh, factored form. So how can, I, how can I make those connections? And what do those equations, the one-half and the one-third, have to do with the six and the one and the five and how are all these things interconnected? That's just a quick, um, how can I reinforce something different? 